and welcome. It's another wet, miserable day here today, but I'm still getting all excited for the new gardening season ahead. In my last garden video, I let you know I bought about six or seven different packs of dahlia tubers. Well, since that video, I've made a second trip to the garden centre and went a bit crazy and bought lots more dahlia tubers. So this year is hopefully going to be a summer of beautiful dahlia flowers. So I thought in this video, I would do a bit of an unboxing of all the different things I've bought. Then when the summer gets here and these flowers are flowering and I can't remember what variety they are, I'll be able to look back at this video and find out what it was I planted. Now I started off my first garden centre trip with two beautiful corms of begonias. These are a dark red begonia and I've not grown begonias before. I've often seen them and thought they look gorgeous but at this time of year when I'm buying summer bulbs they've never quite been in the budget after I've spent my money on everything else. So they were the first pick this year. Two lovely large begonia corms. I think the sheer size and firmness caught my eye. They're a beautiful stock. I can't remember its specific name. They were just in a big loose box so you could pick the ones you wanted which was rather nice like fruit in the supermarket. Next on my pick of delights was a pack of gladioli bulbs. Another dark red plant. This is Gladioli Expresso. They're not quite as large as the bulbs I have in the polytunnel at the moment, but I'm quite sure a few years of growing and they'll get large and fat. And even this year, they will still give me a splendid display of tall Gladioli flowers. And if I grow them inside the polytunnel, there'll be no risk of the wind blowing them over. They might still fall over though if they get tall and heavy. So 10 bulbs for my 3 99 Followed by another gladioli. This is a much smaller variety whose name I've already forgotten. <laughs> gladioli nanus prenus claws. Well, no wonder I've forgotten its name. I can't even say it. <laughs> there we go. Gladioli nanus. Prenus claws. <laughs> I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. They're a smaller gladioli and will never get quite as large as my big deep red ones. A different, a slightly different kind. One I can remember the name of is the Agapanthus. This is an Agapanthus africanus. I might forget the africanus bit but I'll remember it's an agapanthus. There are three in this pack and they're already starting to grow. So I'm going to need to get them planted up into pots at least pretty soon. I'm planning to start my various dahlia tubers off in pots. Now into the dahlias. So Dahlia Golden Scepter. So almost a pom pommy Dahlia here. We have Dahlia Golden Scepter. A nice yellow with what looks to be a little tiny orangey centre. So there's one of those in my pack. A Dahlia Sylvia in a beautiful deep dark orange. Dahlia Thomas A. Edison in a gorgeous deep rich purple. It's got very large tubers so I'm imagining it's going to be a pretty big flower. It's a one meter tall plant. I think my other two were as well. Uh, yes a meter and let's have a check. Oh only 90 centimeters on the yellow one. What's next? Arabian Night, a red dahlia. Ooh, 
Dolia Peter, a nice simple name, a bit pom pommy in a shocking pink. This one's a little different, Dark Princess with a spiky looking flower. It won't be spiky prickly, just has spiky petals. Also a metre tall, I believe. Oh, this is a little short one. It's only 50 centimetres, so half a metre tall. And last in my box for Delia's, Bishop of Landaff. Now this is one I remember from my childhood. My mother has grown it many times in the past and I like its deep red leaves as much as its beautiful red flowers. It's also a single flowered dahlia. Single petaled. So good for the insects to come and grab some pollen and nectar. There are three. I treated myself to lots of landaff. So there are actually three tuber sets in this pack. They were all the tubers and bulbs I purchased on my first trip to the garden centre. I got a few other extra bits. A handful of loose Sturton, Sturton? I think that's how, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but a handful of loose onion sets. I haven't bought very many this year. I still have onions left in storage from last season's growing. So I've decided, although I can usually grow onions quite well, there's no point growing lots and lots of them if I'm not going to be using them. And a packet of Kelvin's Wonder peas. I grow peas every year. I choose Kelvin's Wonder for larger, fatter peas and bigger pods. And I grow early onward as well because they do exactly that. They start podding quite early in the season and carry on for many months throughout the summer. A slightly smaller pea pod with smaller peas, but a good continuous long harvest. A couple of other seeds, some sweet corn, very much a favourite of mine. And this is ambrosia. I don't know if I've grown ambrosia before, I've certainly grown sweet corn frequently, but whether I've actually grown ambrosia, I don't think so. So I'm going to give this variety a try this year. And some squash, some curry squash. I like the curry squash, it's a smallish squash with a very sweet orangey flesh. And last year, I don't know if my plants just didn't reach maturity or if my seeds didn't germinate but I didn't harvest any curry squashies. So I thought I'd buy a fresh packet of seeds to make sure I have fresh seeds that will hopefully give me some healthy curry squash plants this year. So that was my first trip to the garden centre a couple of weeks ago and I had a lovely time and bought lots of wonderful plants to start the garden off this year. But then I have been fortunate enough to receive a small profit share from my work. It wasn't huge, but basically an extra week's wages for free. So I'm certainly not complaining. Extra money for no extra work is always very nice. With that extra free bonus, I decided to treat myself and headed off to the garden centre in search of extra compost and more dahlias. I had a wonderful trip and came back laden with lots more wonderful tubers. So I'm going to go through these as well. <laughs> if you're not already bored and have gone. So my first couple are repeat purchases. I bought myself another Agapanthus. So now I have four because there were three in my first pack and I have only bought a single in the extra packet. And a repeat dahlia, a Thomas A. Edison. I hadn't realised I already had one. I was just looking for things that caught my eye and looked gorgeous on the shelf in the picture. So I obviously liked this one enough. I've bought it twice and I'm quite happy about that. It will allow me to plant 
one inside the polytunnel and one outdoors and we'll see how they both get on in their different environments. I know my polytunnel dahlias can overwinter in there quite successfully as I have grown dahlias in there in the past. Usually just the small half a metre tall ones. Here in the UK we get so wet and cold is just too much for dahlia tubers so each autumn when the plants have died back we need to dig them up and put them in dry storage for the winter if they have any chance whatsoever of surviving. Initially when I bought my first batch I bought them with the intention of not particularly bothered if I save them over the winter. If things get busy next autumn when they need digging up and protecting I don't mind I'll just leave them and expect them to die off but as I have so many now I think I'm going to have to make an effort this winter to dig them up and store them through till next year so what's next on the list another repeat how boring is this a Bishop of Landaff again only a single this time and I had three in my original pack so I'm going to have Landaff all over the place. Followed by another bishop, a white one this time, the Bishop of Dover. And next we have a spiky yellow one, a Kenaminar. I don't know. <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Try Kenamere Land. Bright, sunny, spiky yellow. And sticking on the yellow theme, we have a sunny boy, a bit pom pommy. Is he as tall? Yes, it's still a three foot dahlia. And a Saint Seams with streaks of red through its bright yellow petals. This is a big heavy tuber. Still only a metre tall. I'm imagining it's going to have a nice big hefty flower head. Now we're back into the reds. Gallery Singer, looking very much like the Land Aftalia. A much denser cluster of petals though. Not the single that Landaff is. And Akita looks fun. Very fancy. I hope this does well. On a similar vein, we have Duet, but with much more white in it. Here they are together as a comparison. Nearly finished. A little red pom pom, a Neskio. Well, I'm not sure how little it is actually. Or oh, 80 centimeters tall. Hefty tubers again. Oh, trapped in the basket. Can we get you out? There we go. And lastly, a most unusual one. Verone's Obsidian. Looks like great fun. Very different to anything else I've got. Again, a nice heavy tuber. And I see it's actually starting to put out little tiny roots. The plan for all my dahlia tubers is to pop them up into pots between seven and nine inches. So I'm going to pop these all up, one plant in each pot, and start them off in the polytunnel. And when we're past all risk of frost and I feel they've got stocky and strong enough I'll be able to plant them outdoors in the raised beds. Now dahlias weren't the only thing I bought on my second garden centre trip. I bought some more pea seeds. I managed to find my early onward, my favourite early onwards just loose in a big dustbin. You could scoop out however many you needed. 
it works out a lot cheaper this way as well. I think I paid about 60 pence for all of these pea seeds and for my package of peas that's about the same weight, I paid nearly three pounds. So a much more economical way to buy your peas and beans if you can find them. So lots and lots of peas, which is just what I'm going to need. What else did I buy? Oh, another begonia corn. So now I have three. If I remember rightly, this is also a deep dark red. And I can see it's just starting to grow. So nice and healthy, two little growing tips just starting to show themselves. And one more packet of seeds, a little cherry tomato. The packet describes it as a good sun-dried tomato. So I'm hoping it's going to have a good strong tomato-y flavour. Principi Borges, again, another butchering of pronunciation. <laughs> Now that's it in my basket, but I did treat myself to two tiny little plants. I have a dianthus, a dark red, oh it is called dark red, <laughs> is that Oscar? Yes, a dianthus Oscar dark red. And a little treasure in deep rows. I do make a point when buying plants to buy them when they actually have a showing flower bud. If it's a perennial plant like this one I don't mind if all of its flowers are nearly past. As long as I can see an actual flower showing its colour I know that the following year it's going to flower in that colour. Unfortunately, so often you find you purchase a plant with a label that tells you it's going to be a beautiful sunny yellow and when it does eventually open those buds and flower for you, it turns out to be pink or white or red. It's happened so frequently in my early gardening years. I'm very cautious to never buy anything unless I can actually see the flower bud on the plant. So although my dianthus is very green, I do have one little deep red bud that shows this really is a deep red and not a pink or a white. And that's it. I've had a wonderful time. Woo! And bought lots and lots of dahlias. So I think I need to go up to the polytunnel and get planting. Bye for now and we'll see you next time. Remember, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it. If you've enjoyed today's video, click that like button and let me know. Click subscribe and YouTube will make sure you see my next video. Bye for now and thanks for watching. And don't forget, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it.